Hello and uh, welcome back to part 32 of Summoner. And uh, well, after freeing Wolong, we need to uh, set up a few side quests before we head on to the next dungeon. And you know, I hope they uh, clear up these dead bodies before we get back. It is quite a mess. Now you can see here I'm ki killing the uh, blue imp, and like I said, uh, any su if Joseph dies, any of his summons uh, just turn up as monsters. But uh, luckily, that they tend to be fairly weak. Oh, and remember to head over to the general's position, and you can pick up an I ever shop katana. But before we head off, we have a friend right round around this corner to meet. It's Jakar. And so with this, our original four party member party is uh, up and running. And of course, uh, just got, just, got, just fills us in on his backstory here. And it turns out that that queen, uh, Galien, was sort of working with Prince Sornihan the whole time. And those two now rule over a dead wasteland. So when, when we get back to Medieval, we'll have to sort those two out. Yeah, so I guess at this point, your car pretty much has nothing uh, to fight for. So if he thought, ah, forget it, I'll just get the rings back to Joseph. Speaking of which, that is what he does give us here, another ring. And I like this, he's still, he's, he's still not abandoned the idea of killing uh, Joseph. <laughs> The Ring of the Four Winds. Yes, yeah, so uh, at this point we pretty much already have two of the Dragon Rings. The next one will be in the dungeon, and th then the next one after that will be in the hands of Murad himself. So really, if you were expecting Orenia to be the same size as uh, Mediva, well, I think on the map it is, but uh, just in terms of levels and environments, it's it's a lot smaller. In fact, often uh, I would often call this sort of like the second act of the game. The first act being Medieval. This the second yeah, the second act is then Orenia, and the third one is back to Medieval. But but that's probably a poor way of thinking about it because yeah, they're not the same length. Now you saw there the Ring of Might. I actually got that in the Cavern of Wolong, and you get them from defeating the. Uh, blue monitors and they're pretty good at uh, magical items so if you see them they are worth getting and essentially I'll give Jakar a one-handed blunt weapon which will be pretty useful against uh, most of the enemies and essentially when it comes to Jakar he at this point he, he becomes quite a good physical fighter and once you level him up even more he gets more and more powerful in fact, I'd say near the end, he's actually one of the best characters in the game. Well, granted, I guess that they are really good, but uh, uh, you'll see what I mean. He becomes a real heavy hitter. And of course, you can see I also re-equip some armor. There we go. Hey, you're looking snazzy, Jakar. Uh, now, there are some side quests that appear in well long, but you have to leave the uh, village and then return and then uh, I guess it will reset to a sort of uh, a more peaceful time mm. now what's a shame is that along this uh, lake here there is meant to be like a structure like a, a w or wall structure which I can presume is meant to be a dam uh, but the trouble is the draw distance on this game is so poor you can't really see it you can only see like sort of the edges of this wall well look you can see the huge like curved wall on the map here hmm I'm thinking is that wall meant to be a dam or some kind of security barrier loading but as you can see by the graphics I put on the screen here to the left there are quite a few side quests we uh, set up here. And that's mainly what this part will be, just setting up side quests for the uh, rest of the game. 
Uh, kind of basic, but hey, uh, you know, if you want a whole 100% playthrough, this sort of thing has to be done. Thanks for that, mate. Yeah, again, like I was saying about the barrier, you, you can you can sort of see it in the background to the left here as the as the camera zooms in, but you can't see it once it zooms out, which is a real shame. Because I think they were going for like a, a beautiful area. They were going for huge vistas and huge structures. But anyway, this guy fills us in on the Dragon of Jade. And just a bit of mythology. Okay, first up, we have the side quest. We talk to this uh, lady here. Uh, now, this side qu quest is the family tradition, where essentially we have to carry some of her well-loved items and leave them at a grave in Langshan Forest. And speaking of which, yes, Langshan Forest is where we'll be heading next. And I must say that is it's probably one of the big biggest dungeons in the entire game. And there's over like if I if I recall correctly, there's like nine different locations on that in that one uh dungeon in that entire forest. Nine different locations to complete side quests. Anyway, we get the locket and uh, Diarming's coin. Again, I can't help feel if this was like a modern RPG, you'd probably they'll probably give you the option to sell that. Okay, moving on here. Talk to this guy here, and yes, this is Lakay, and this is definitely part of the. Uh, Durgan's Lucky Charm side quest. And you know what? Praise be to the four dragons, he has it. Unfortunately, we do have to tell a slight white lie and say it's part of the prophecy <laughs> to get it. Um, oh, oh, mm, I need it for the prophecy. Yes. And I'll also need uh, some of your gold for the prophecy, uh, some of your food, and uh, a note with your wife. Hey, eight, eight for the prophecy. Do you want me to save the world or not? But here is the the infamous Durgan's earring. Hmm. Huh. It's gone like a hula hoop. Anyway, walking around here, the village, and I I, I, I do like the architecture of this place. Anyway, this woman here called Nandi, and this side quest is Nandi the Gavra. Now this will require you to collect three items. Specifically, three plants. Now, two of these appear as part of random encounters on the world map, and the third one appears in, yep, you've guessed it, Langshang Forest. And the first item is Sparrow's Egg, which is actually not an egg, it's a, a, a plant. So anyway, moving up here, there should be a big house in the top corner. You know, it's a shame you can't enter more of these buildings, and you can't, you know, that you can't really explore them. They're just there as scenery, I guess. And I've just noticed that the, the dead bodies are still around. And that, that's another thing too, is that this village never really gets back to normal, or you don't see it as a, as a regular village. Uh, this guy in his back garden here is Longu, and essentially he ran off and left his hat in, yeah, that's right, Langshan Forest. So that's uh, yet another item we have to collect. And actually, I'll just, you know, be honest now. All the all the five key points you see on the screen here, yep, they all they all relate to that Langshan Forest. But uh, anyway, about this forest, you'll see when we get there, but uh, it was definitely one of the the biggest milestones when recording this game. But on the bright side, once I knew I recorded this forest, then I knew I did, did the most longest and... Well, it's not hardest, but I knew I did like the biggest chunk 
of the game. Now you can see the architecture is still broken here, but uh, I did want to talk to this guy too. Now if you if you remember, we talked to this guy before we headed into the cavern of Wolong. It's not really a side quest, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to show off his resolution there. But anyway, like I said, this doesn't appear to be like a, a proper town. Below on the bright side, it... Uh, Oh yeah, I was, I was about to say, it does have merchants in it, it's like an armor merchant, a weapons merchant, and a potions merchant. So you can come here to stock up on the stuff if you want to. I'm just taking a look at the weapons here, and uh, Let's see, the weapon I, ha I have my eye on is the Warhammer, a very powerful blunt weapon. Well, granted, it is fairly slow to use, and it does require two hands, which, pu which puts me off. That, and honestly, you'll see later on in the game, I do actually find a really good blunt weapon to use. And uh, again, just a reminder, if you want to earn money, sell your weapons to uh, that guy there. Ah yes, uh, this is uh, the woman who, uh, if you re recall, gave us the uh, knife in part of the side quest to get our hand back. And, oh, and that's a nice part of the backstory there. Apparently she's going to head to the Terror of Eloy to uh, free the slaves there. That's good of her. I mean, I would do it myself, but hey, the game won't let me back into the tower. Okay, next side quest, the statue of Goldie the Second, who, if you recall, was the deposed emperor, and apparently he was a better ruler. But, uh, you know, it's hard n hard not to be better than a madman who builds a big tower. And essentially, yep, it's a sort of a, an item hunt quest where you have to find the missing parts of the statue. Two arms, two legs, and a head. And yep, you've guessed it, two of these items are in Langshan Forest. Now finally, I just want to talk to this merchant here. Again, an armor merchant. You know, something I tend to overlook when it comes to the armor is this sort of boots and gloves. And just have a look at the chainmail leggings here. I can see I just bought two there. I think that's just uh, equipped to the... Uh, other party members of mine. 